But I think that one of the big lessons of the election that the Obama folks lost or missed or forgot and the White House missed was that the progressives did very well, thank you very much, in this election cycle, even in the face of this incredible avalanche of corporate money, number one. The second big point that I think everybody in America needs to get, and they won't because the media won't talk about it, is that this campaign was the triumph of, of invisible corporate money, non-transparent corporate and billionaire money over small-D democracy. Now, why is it that the networks won't talk about that? Why is it that the talking heads on TV don't talk about Citizens United constantly? Well, the, the reason, quite simply, is because, you know, that, that uh, you know, 30, 40, 50 million dollars that Karl Rove raised and spent, the nearly $100 million that the U.S. Chamber of Commerce raised, some of it from foreign sources, and spent, where did they spend that? In the media. So you think the media is going to turn around and go, oh, these guys are terrible. They shouldn't have been giving us all this money to run all these ads. I don't think so. It's not going to happen. But it is terrible, and it is the corruption of American democracy. And it also demonstrates the complicity of our media with, you know, in, in the, basically the corporate takeover of America, the loss of small-D democracy. There has to, you know, I'm not anti-corporate. I'm, I'm, I, I, I own a corporation. I mean, I, I've, I've been running corporations most of my life, for-profit and not-for-profit both. That said, there needs to be a balancing power. If corporations are going to participate in politics, there needs to be a balancing power for that corporate power. And right, you know, historically that balancing power was two things. It was the power of government itself regulating corporate behavior, and it was the unions. And Ronald Reagan declared war on the unions because they were big funders of the Democratic Party. This was a, a 30, 40-year strategy to destroy the Democratic Party, and I'd say they've largely done it. Much of the Democratic – now you've got a, the, the spectacle of the President of the United States – saying that he's going to inflate the deficit by extending tax breaks for billionaires and keeping the 15% maximum tax rate for guys who run hedge funds and who run these so-called private equity firms, the Mitt Romneys of the world, the guys who make money by buying a company, firing everybody in the company who, who might even be slightly redundant, moving all the jobs they can offshore, breaking the company up into pieces, selling off those pieces or shutting them down, stripping the assets out, wiping out American jobs, and stuffing millions, in Mitt Romney's case, $400 million in their pockets. And they pay a maximum income tax rate of 15%, something that's vigorously defended by the Rush Limbaugh's and Sean Hannity's and Glenn Beck's and Michael Savage's of the world, something that's vigorously de defended by the John Boner and, and Eric Cantor's of the world. Why? Because it's, they, want, they want the campaign contributions from these guys. So you've got this unholy alliance between massive wealth and the political process, and it's now infecting the, the Democratic Party to the point where Harry Truman, when Harry Truman back in the day came out and said this. The people know that the Democratic Party is the people's party, and the Republican Party is the party of special interests. And it always has been and always will be. 1948, the president, and he was at that time the sitting president of the United States running for re-election, which he won. And he comes out and just calls it as it is. And by the way, just 30 seconds earlier in that same clip, he called the Republicans his enemy. And Obama used a metaphor that had the word enemy in it. And, and all these talking heads running around, I saw several of them on TV. Never in the history of America has a sitting president of the United States referred to a Republican as the enemy. We refer to the Japanese as the enemy. We refer, but this is this is unprecedented. This man and and Obama didn't even actually refer to the Republicans as enemies. He said that the, he said that people were failing to, uh, to to fight their enemies and help their friends or whatever the old metaphor. I mean, it was he was he was referring to a cliche. Harry Truman didn't even bother with the cliche. He just said, these guys are your enemies. They want to take your jobs and ship them overseas. They want to wipe out your right to have a union. 
You'll recall it was 19, well, you probably don't recall. Most of you aren't old enough. I'm not old enough. 1947, in the election of 46, the Republicans took both the House and the Senate, and you had a sitting Democratic president, Harry Truman, and he tried to get a national health care bill passed. He tried to expand Social Security so that it included health care and covered everybody in the United States. The Republicans shot that down in both the House and the Senate. And then they passed a bill called the Taft-Hartley Act, which allowed states to say, you know, if an employer doesn't want to have a union, they don't have to have a union, even if the majority of the workers want the union. Back in 1935, when the Wagner Act was passed, it said if the majority of the workers want a union, the, the employer has to go along with it, period, nationwide. And from 1935 until 1947, we went from about 1% or 2% unionization to 35%. And the Republicans were just plain old flat out freaking out. So they passed Taft-Hartley and said an individual state can pass a, a law through their state legislature and become a so-called right-to-work state. And employers can ignore the will of their employees with regard to unions. And 15, 20 states picked that up right away, and boom, it was the beginning of, you know, it blew a hole in the side of the union movement. Harry Truman vetoed that. The Republicans overrode his veto. He still won by calling them out. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Anyhow, 866-987-TOM, 866-745-TONS, our telephone numbers. Anything goes Friday. Back with you, folks.